If you're ready to take your destiny into your own hands, you've come to the right place. This is The Bulletproof Entrepreneur, featuring interviews with the most exciting and amazing entrepreneur. Here's your host, Chi Odogu. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to the show today. If you love what you hear on today's episode of the podcast, go to iTunes and leave a review and a comment. It helps other great listeners like yourself find the show. And of course, you can always find more episodes of the Bulletproof Entrepreneur Podcast at www.odogwu.com. And without further ado, on with the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I have a great guest on the line today. I'm talking to Ken Tucker. Ken is the founder of Chainscape Web. It's a small business and marketing and web design agency that specializes in comprehensive integrated marketing strategies and campaigns for small and medium-sized businesses. Ken is a master duct tape marketing certified consultant. He's an inbound marketing certified professional since 2010. And he's also a certified story brand um, guide and uh, consultant, I believe. So he's been in the um, online marketing space for quite a long time and over the years, he's evolved from what he originally started to where he is today. That is helping small businesses succeed and grow their businesses online. Uh, he has degrees in, now I looked this up earlier, in philosophy, physics, and public administration. Is that correct, Ken? That is correct, yes. yes. So you're going to tell us a little bit about how you got from you know physics, philosophy, and public administration, those three Ps, to right. um, online marketing. So with that okay. said, Ken, welcome to the show. Yeah, well, th- great. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I look forward to talking with you. Yeah, so, um, I, you know, when I started college, um, I, I started as a chemistry major. I thought, you know, this isn't really general enough, so I went to physics. And after I studied physics for a while, I decided to uh, make the shift over to philosophy um, I, I guess my focus when I went to college was that I just wanted to make sure I could, I could learn. Okay. I love, I love learning. And I, I felt like if I could, as long as I know how I, how to learn and I have a very solid, broad educational background, and, you know, and I, I mean, I, you know, I took a lot of math and science obviously when I was, when I was in college uh-huh. and, did, and did wind up, wind up getting a, uh, a minor in, in physics. Uh, I, I was just really drawn to the idea of I love thinking, I love solving problems, I love the big picture and how things fit together. And um, I, I found that you know when when I was in physics and chemistry, it was a little too tactical and and too procedural sometimes for me, I, I guess. <laughs> so so uh, I took a year off of college, uh, you know, worked worked uh, pretty much that solid year to put some money back into the coffers. And then uh, I was looking for a way to apply philosophy, mm. and I thought public administration would be a great way to go about that. Yeah, I really envisioned going into uh, being like a city manager, or, you know, or, or or something at that level. Mm-hmm. But I wound up finishing third or second on a lot of job interviews right out, you know, right before I was graduating, and I got frustrated with that. So I said, I'm taking the next job. I don't care where it is. It, it just happened to bring me to St. Louis, which is where I'm still at. Mm. And uh, it got me involved in business process modeling. Yeah. And this pro- type of business process modeling works really well as a tie-in to software development. Uh, you can actually, we actually used to simulate business processes, streamline the performance and, and, the, and the workflow and the business flow through a, through a process. And then we, would, then we would develop a program to automate the process. Okay. And, and so I did that and, uh, you know, just kind of worked my way through the information technology space for, you know, most of my, most of my career, um, you know, wound up managing IT solutions for, for a company. And uh, at that point, it was time for me to, to make a change. Mm-hmm. The company was going in a different direction than where I wanted to go. And so I decided to, uh, you know, step out on my own in 2005 um, and maybe not for the best reasons. I mean, I, a part of it was me being a little bullheaded and thinking that I had a better idea and that, and that my idea of what I wanted to pursue for business was, was better than the company I was working with. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, honestly, uh, the first couple of years were a struggle. Then the economy took its downturn yeah. and that really forced me to, to really think about what it is that I, I love to do the most. And, mm. 
and and that was the time when everything online was just exploding. Mm. You know, we had we'd been involved in in my previous company. I, I you know I had worked with large Java web applications mm -hmm. and commerce systems, but I, I love the marketing aspect. I had a chance to manage a marketing team. Uh, you know, when I was at my previous company, and and so we just decided to go all in and focus on digital marketing, and uh, we've been doing that ever since two thousand eight. Oh, that's fantastic. And I, and I love how you transitioned because um, you went from business process consulting, working with um, uh, Rose International, leading teams, and then you now stepped out on your own. And then in stepping out on your own, I'm sure, did you, did you start out as a business process consultant doing it independently before you now found yourself in the recession and now decided that, you know, this marketing is the best thing? So, I guess my question here is, did you lean on your strengths when you first stepped out on your own? Or did you also look around and see, okay, what else am I interested in and start with that? I, I did what I, I did what I knew and what I mm -hmm. thought was a, a great business opportunity. Uh, it wasn't that I had a super deep knowledge of it, but I was very accustomed to building project teams and solution focused teams. And there was a technology that um, one of the very large software vendors out there had in this space called uh, IT portfolio management. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of the bridge that I've been looking for for a while, uh, you know, and, and how do you align business goals and objectives with the information technology spin? Yeah. And so you look at your, your IT spend, your information technology spend, very much like the way you would look at a, an investment for, portfolio. And it's got to align with those business goals and objectives, whether you're trying to launch a new product or move into a new market or improve customer uh, service and, and retention rates of customers and things like that. And that's what got me really excited. And honestly, that, that even strengthened the ties for me more uh, than ever into, into the world of marketing. Okay. Okay. And, and so that's really kind of how I made that transition. Um, it turns out that, um, you know, the great solution that was out there was quickly, quickly eclipsed by uh, other software vendors. And, yeah. and, and so we, we had to change uh, in order to survive. And I think that that's a key point. I, and I, I feel strongly enough about change that I obviously have it in the name of my company. Exactly. <laughs> because, you, you know, we're like on our fourth iteration. Wow. You know, I, Every time, you know, right now we, we've gone from, um, you know, doing the, the IT space that we did, then we did really just predominantly websites, then we moved into full-blown, um, you know, search engine optimization website, mm -hmm. uh, you know, social media, stuff like that. And now we're really kind of taking, taking that next step and we're really focused on lead generation and marketing automation and, and CRM space. So that's really what I'm excited about right now. Great. So let's, let's, let's dive right into that. So lead generation, and I see on your website, one of the things you do frequently is you speak at local chambers of commerce, especially where you are in St. Louis and a bunch of others in the area. You work with lots of local businesses and you, you even wrote a book for um, social media marketing for restaurants, and also you've gotten these certifications in marketing. So tell us a little bit about the problems you see in small businesses and how you help them generate leads. Because we know that as many small business owners out there, they don't have the resources like a big company, maybe like a Fortune 500 IBM or whatever, to invest heavily in marketing. So how do you First of all, show them the value proposition that what you do can help their businesses and what are many small businesses doing wrong that they should be doing um, okay. differently. Okay. Well, I, I think, you know, for a small business, um, especially if you're going to be doing business in a, in a local geographic area, whether people come into your place of business or whether you go uh, to your customer's, uh, you know, home or, or business in a, in a particular geographic area, like a St. Louis metropolitan area or, you know, a suburb of, of New York on the New Jersey side, wherever. One of the best things and really the first thing that I would say every business needs to do is they need to make sure that they've claimed and optimized their Google My Business page. Okay. Uh, that's what's going to allow you to show up in those Google Map results. Yeah. So when somebody types in product or service followed by a location and you get the map result on Google, 
um, you know, you, you're, the way you get shown in that is, is you've got to have a Google My Business page. Yeah. You improve your chances of showing up there, you know, by getting people to go write reviews on Google. Um, you can, uh, you can upload uh, pictures. I mean, I would really encourage people fill that out as much as they can. Mm -hmm. If Google gives you five categories of pictures that you can upload inside of your business, outside of your business, who your team is, take advantage of all of those and, 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 and fill it up as much as possible, mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and then continue to, to go in and monitor and make sure that the information is, is up to date and accurate there. So that's a, uh, that's a huge thing. And that kind of ties into reputation management, yeah. which I think is another really easy thing for any small business to do. Uh, take control of having people write reviews about your business. Mm -hmm. If, if you don't take control one of two things is going to happen. Nobody goes and writes reviews or they're going to skew to the negative. Just mm -hmm. human nature is we're more inclined to write a review when we've had a negative experience than yeah. a positive one. Yeah. So, you know, when somebody goes online and they look at your business and then they don't see any reviews, you know, you're, you're kind of leaving a, a void for them to fill That's with their own thinking. And it could be, Hey, nobody's cared enough about this business to go write a review. Yeah. Um, you don't want to take, you don't want to leave that to chance. So my recommendation is take control of it, build a review funnel, make it super easy for people to find the review sites that you want them to go write reviews on that matter to you the most. Um, and, 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 and so I would really recommend that people understand what review sites matter for them. Most, if not all of those are free to sign up for mm -hmm. and uh, that, you know, that, that, that is a big, huge first step for a local business in terms of a digital presence online. Okay, great. Now, you mentioned something here. I don't want us to gloss over it. Um, so you mentioned build a review funnel. I know you're a marketer, I'm a marketer, but for the person listening out there who does not understand marketing lingo, what do you mean by building a review funnel from like the beginning to the end? Yeah, so what I, what I recommend there is you create a landing page. Okay. Uh, we actually, you know, we have a system that we use uh, to set up for our clients where it has a, kind of a gating process where you can have people click on a, a star rating, you know, from one to five or one to ten. And it, let's just say they're doing one to five. And if they click three or fewer, instead of taking them to the to the subsequent page where it's going to have buttons that they can click on to just go directly to the review sites that you want them to go to. Uh, it's going to pop up with a feedback form, and so you can use that as a customer service opportunity okay. to, to, you know, to catch somebody who who is frustrated with their experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you'll get an email notification that that you know that they filled out that uh, that that feedback form. Yeah, it prevents somebody from going out there and writing a, a lukewarm review when maybe they just needed to talk to you and get a couple of things clarified. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe after you have that conversation and you do the follow up with them, they're going to go out and write a five star review for you. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so then I think it's also really important, you know, when people click on four or five stars out of out of five stars, um, you you take them to the, a, a page where you're going to have buttons that say Google, Yelp, Facebook, probably not Yelp anymore. Yelp's become um, they they really don't want people to. Uh, do anything in terms of driving the review process. So I would keep you all off there actually. Okay. Uh, Facebook is great. If you're a home contractor, maybe a site like Angie's list or home advisor, if you're a realtor, maybe Zillow or, uh, you know, if you're a doctor, maybe health grades or something like that. And, and, you know, pick maybe three places that you want people to go write reviews for your business. Yeah. Google should always be on that list. If you're a local business, mm -hmm. um, Facebook is pretty good. And then, uh, and then maybe an industry specific one okay. and, uh, and then get in the habit and train your team to ask people to go write reviews. Yes. I think, I think that's one of the key things because, um, people working in their local businesses, they may not even think about saying, Oh, I need to actually encourage the client or the customer to actually go take this extra step. Yeah. So, so is there a way to help make that conversation easier? Like, you know, do they offer coupons or something like that to incentivize people to go and take that extra, extra step? Well, I, I'm not a big fan of offering incentives. Okay. Um, I, I, I think that you, you can run into a little bit of trouble. I know people who do okay. uh, do that, take that process. I, you know, I, I just think if you just ask for people, 
uh, to go write a reviews and then you give them tools to make it really easy. easy. So yeah, okay. print out a review card, you know, with the review link to take people right to the web page where mm-hmm. they can go write that, go to that review funnel and they can pick the review site that they want to write the review on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you're, if you've got a physical place of business, like, especially like a restaurant, you know, put the review link right on your menu, put it at the bottom of the ticket, you know, uh, you know, or, or the receipt. And when you had, you know, when somebody checks out, um, you know, train your wait staff to, you know, if they see that people are having a good time and seem to be enjoying the food, I mean, you know, just say, Hey, you know, we love your feedback. You know, we'd appreciate a, a review on Google if you wouldn't mind. Mm. You know, I, I think if you just get in the habit of asking, uh, you can, so, you know, you can also reach back out to your uh, previous customers yep. and send an email to them and say, you know, hey, you know, we love the testimonial that you wrote that we could put on your website or our website. Um, you know, if you wouldn't mind, you'd be, you'd be doing us a huge favor if you'd be willing to, you know, to go write a review yeah. Uh, yeah. for us on Google. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that because it's low pressure and it's also like, you know, they, you've actually done the service, you've gotten paid, but you're also like asking for a favor. And who uh, who doesn't want to give a favor after they've actually received um, good service or something? It's almost like a, a non-financial tip, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I think most people, you know, one thing I know for sure is that most people aren't going to go write a review if uh, if they're not prompted to. Yeah. There are people who, like I said, if they've had a negative experience, there are some people that are much more inclined to just write reviews just because they do it because they like to do it. Yeah. Honestly, sometimes they do it, and I'm guilty of this as well. Sometimes I like to brag about where I went, so mm-hmm. I write a review about the place, you know, and because uh, I want my friends to be jealous and know where I was at, you know. <laughs> um, so it would just make it super easy for people. Okay, great. All right, so we've talked a lot about that. So what are some other lead generation steps and tactics local businesses can implement, especially now that we're 24 days into the new year, you know, things are kind of getting into the swing of um, routine habits. What are some, you know, new things to do to start driving more um, leads and clients into the business apart from this um, referral and review mechanism that you've mentioned? Well, I, I think it's important to take a look at your website and make sure that it's designed to convert. Make sure it's crystal clear uh, in your message that, you know, people need to be able to pass the grunt test. Mm-hmm. They've got to know within three to five seconds when they land on your website what it is you do. Yeah. You also need awesome. to ask them to do something on your website. You know, take some call to action. Mm-hmm. And here it could be to download a coupon, um, you know, or it could be to set up, you know, schedule a free consultation or download an ebook or watch a video. Yeah. But don't just have, don't just have your call to action be contact us. Yeah, uh, it needs to be stronger than that. Um, and so and so that you've got to have that in place. But then after you have that in place, I think for many small businesses, the reality is because of the I mean SEO is not cheap, mm-hmm. and it's and it's not something that happens overnight. There are certainly elements that are going to drive results faster than than others. But I think a lot of small businesses. Uh, I think they would do pretty well to look at Facebook advertising and you can even build a, a funnel uh, using a faith, Facebook advertising strategy where you ha- you have one ad that maybe reaches a broader audience, drives people to a particular web page. You can use Facebook's remarketing pixel mm-hmm. to build a website custom audience of the people who you got from the broad audience ad onto that particular web page or maybe even overall your website depends on how you want to structure it. Mm-hmm. But then you can turn around and run a, a remarketing ad only to those people. And, you know, I mean, you may, you may have reached 2000 people with your ad. You may have gotten 20 people to your website. Well, you're now going to be running an ad to 20 people who, you know, were very interested because yeah. they landed on your website and your ad spend is really controlled because you're only going to be running an ad in front of 20 people mm-hmm. that you already know are kind of warm leads. Yeah. And you can even add a third level to that, you know, to warm up people even more and get them to take a stronger call to action. So you can actually use Facebook advertising in a sequence like that to, to actually create a funnel. Um, I, I, I think, you know, the other thing in terms of lead generation is, you know, it, it, you email is still – really, really important. And building a strong email list 
where people are joining because they want to, because they're getting something of value mm-hmm. and doing, you know, some, some email marketing follow-up campaigns to nurture people through, you know, through the, the buyer's journey, I think is, uh, is a really strong play and it's a pretty affordable one. Mm-hmm. Now, I love that you mentioned Facebook advertising, but in the news recently, um, Mark Zuckerberg was talking about the changes they're going to make to Facebook or where it's going to be like um, businesses, my, their ads might not be showing up in the feeds as often because um, regular people have been complaining that they see too many ads. So do you think it's still a strong strategy going forward, given that some new changes are coming into Facebook? I know they change often, but this change yeah. seems a little significant when you look at all the other changes they've made in the past. Well, the, uh, you know, I... I I guess I'd be absolutely shocked if Facebook's going to do anything to jeopardize a tremendous amount of their yeah, sure. advertising revenue. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, there may be a there may be an impact, but I think what it's going to do is it's going to force us all to just be a little bit better about the ads that we mm. create. Don't be as don't be as loose with our ad targeting. I mean, it's going to make it maybe ask us to really zero in our targeting a little bit more okay. so that we're really reaching, you know, people who are very likely to be interested. Okay. You know, and Facebook has, you know, some metrics that you can pay attention to, like mm-hmm. maybe relevancy score. Exactly. It's going to be something that, um, you know, you need to start to pay a lot more attention to. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. I love that. I love that. So I want to look at the other side of it because this show is not only listened to by, um, people that are business owners, but it's also listened to by people that are thinking of launching their business. So somebody that wants to follow in your footsteps, Ken, and wants to do what you're doing in terms of doing lead generation and helping small businesses grow in their own region. Like I, for example, I used to do, I do the same thing when I was living in Lagos, Nigeria. I just moved to Toronto, Canada two weeks ago, and I'm starting this too. So for somebody in the same shoes or is even thinking of, okay, this is the year I'm going to quit my job and then I want to start a digital agency just like Ken. How do I go about finding my first client given that I have learned this? Maybe I've taken a course or two, but I just don't know how to get that first person to pay me $1 to do what I know. Okay. Well, I think, um, so if you're, you know, it's best to start local. Mm -hmm. So, you know, join, join a local chamber uh, become a part of a networking group. It could be a Toastmasters group. It could be, you know, a, a BNI type chapter or or similar. Um, but it could be a mastermind group that you join. I, I mean, but but you know, get in front of other people. people. Yeah. It, it, that's absolutely critical. I, I mean, if, look, I'm a big inbound marketing guy, and I, I tend to be somewhat introverted. So, <laughs> I, I you know, I've worked hard over over the years to get a lot of, um, you know, a lot of leads happening by website, but when you're getting started, you don't have that luxury. You've got to get out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, meet people, talk to them, focus on their, on their problems, Mm -hmm. find a way to solve their problems, you know, and part of it might be just to connect them with other resources and build relationships. But eventually you're, you're going to need to find somebody who says, okay, I like what I'm hearing. Um, you know, let's get started. What do we need to do? Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, sometimes to get people to pull the trigger, especially when you don't have references that they can call and check, um, you know, I, I kind of consider this a bootstrapping strategy where you, 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 you do it just to make sure that maybe you cover costs or maybe you don't even really break even mm-hmm. with that first client, but you do it knowing that They'll give it's you a review. investment. It's it, you're building a reference, you're okay. learning, and so as a result, you might discount your services. You might do some things, uh, you know, that you throw in for the price that you would not normally plan on doing. Mm. But to get the experience, build the reference, get confidence because okay. uh, you know the confidence is critical. If you yeah. don't have confidence, you're also going to struggle. So I, that's yeah. what I would recommend. Great, great. And I think as we start to wind down the podcast, I have some few wrapping up questions. So looking at your site, I see you're a story brand certified guide. You're also a certified marketing consultant from Duct Tape Marketing and a bunch of other um, digital marketing um, accreditation bodies. So I think I want to focus on those first two, the story brand and the Duct Tape Marketing. So um what did you learn from Story Brand, and how has it helped you change your business? And then you can also apply the same thing 
the same question to duct tape marketing. Okay. With story brand, what I love about it is it, it's all about clarity. Mm. You know, it, it just, it, it gave me a better perspective and a better way to talk about how to create a clear message. Mm -hmm. um, you read my intro, uh, you know, which was, which is kind of the old convoluted way that we used to talk about things. Mm. Now, now, you know, and we're in the process of revamping our website. Um, now what I would say is we build websites to generate customers. Oh, I love that. Simple. So you want, to get, you want to get crystal clear. You want to get right to the point it needs to be very, you know, and it needs to be answering the mail in regard to a problem that your, your target audience is going to have. Mm. So uh, I also, and that, that clarity of message works its way throughout core marketing materials. Um, you know, building a, a, a sales funnel is, is fundamental. Uh, designing the pages on your website uh, is is um, is really important in a in a story brand approach. Again, because you want to focus on clarity. Uh, story brand you know, for your listeners that haven't come across it, it, it basically uses the elements of story. Mm -hmm. But but where it's different is it, instead of you know we might we often fall into the trap of you know as a business we we consider ourselves the hero of the story. With story brand, it's the customer that's the hero, and the business is the guide that helps the the customer who has a problem. Uh, you know, they give them they give them a plan that calls them to action to achieve an outcome or avoid ideally avoid failure. Mm -hmm. And so I I love that simplicity. It's something that we've experienced for thousands and thousands of years as as the human race. Mm -hmm. uh, where, I mean, we learn through story. Yeah. So I, so I think that's absolutely brilliant. Duct tape marketing, I was drawn to that because um, coming from a large software development uh, environment, I worked for several Department of Defense projects where when you write software, uh, that software can't fail or people people can die as a result of it. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and so, high stakes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and so I didn't work on anything that was quite that hardcore, but it was pretty close. Yeah. And and so uh, when you do that, you, you really have to systematize your, your processes. You have to start to measure and track and improve and optimize. And there's this concept called the uh, capability maturity model in software development. Uh -huh. And it's really, uh, I mean, you know, large corporations now use this. And they look for firms to, that they're going to outsource their their information technology services to. They you know they want them to have this uh, level, a particular lo level in this uh, capability maturity model because that shows that they've got processes and and, and controls in place to optimize uh, you know or or at least manage the delivery of the software and and the quality of the software. Uh, Duct tape offers that same thing, but I think for a small business. Uh, gives a small business a marketing system that they can take and run with. Uh, a core concept there is the marketing hourglass. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably all are familiar with the you know the phrase "no like and trust." Yeah. Um, John Janch, who created uh, duct tape uh, and, and wrote a book about it, you know, several years ago, ten years or so ago. Um, what he did is he took the idea of the no like and trust, and he and, and we talk about sales funnels. Well, sales funnels are just like what happens when you get out of the bottom. It's like, okay, you know, that's not really defined. He looks at it as an hourglass. So no like and trust is at the top of the hourglass. Try and buy is, um, is where you're at as, as you're getting somebody from a lead to a visitor to a customer. And then repeat and refer are the final two steps so that, you know, you're going out and you're asking your existing good customers to refer you or to buy again from you, or, or to buy more from you. And, and so you really, you know, you kind of flip the hourglass over once somebody becomes a customer, and now they start working through the repeat and refer process. Um, I, I love the simplicity of that. I think it's very powerful, and I think it gives, it gives a, a business a really great set of tools because they can think, okay, as I'm looking at the customer journey for, for whatever it is that I sell, I need to think about, how are they feeling as they go through no like and trust, try by repeat and refer when they're thinking about my business? Do they do they know me well enough? Have they do they you know have they gotten enough information to the point where they're ready to to buy from my business? If not, then you need to focus on getting them more more content or or more information, if you will, to to help them um, you know get through that no like and trust phase. 
so so I, I think it's you know it, it's great. It's it's a it's a repeatable process. It's a framework that I think any any business can use, large or small. Love it, love it, love it. So as we start to wind down the show, I just have um, one or two wrapping up questions for you before I let you go. So my first question is this. You know, your first book, it's titled Seven Steps to Marketing Success. Is that correct? Well, that's actually, um, that's a book that John, put to, John Jange put together uh-huh. That, uh-huh. Uh, that that we, we uh, you know, as a duct tape certified consultant, I have the rights to, to okay. be able to have that. Okay. So could you, uh, I, could you too, quickly share the seven steps okay. and then how can the business apply them to be successful? Hello? Yeah, I'm sorry. What was that? I said, could you quickly share the seven steps to marketing success and how a small business can apply them to be successful in the new year? Yeah, well, it's basically, um, you know, going through uh, clarifying your message um, you, building a building out a total online presence, um, you know. I mean, there are, there are, um, you, you know, you need to reach out and, and start to generate leads and nurture leads. Um, it, it referral, it, you know, is another big stage there. So it, it really just is a, a framework again that you can go through to basically, um, you know. It, it, Look, there are a thousand different choices that are out there that you can do mm-hmm. when you're when you're trying to figure out how to market and promote your business and and you know without a framework to help you make those decisions and, and steps to kind of work through, um, it, it, it can be really overwhelming and confusing. So I think that's the whole value of the seven steps. Okay. Great. And my second to the last question is, um, given your experience thus far for the past few years in business. If you could go back in time, is there anything you'd want to change or is there anything you'd do differently knowing what you know now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if I knew what I, you know, back then what I know now, I I, I probably would have been able to avoid some of the mistakes that I made. Uh, That would have been nice from a financial uh, perspective. You know, maybe maybe I wouldn't have. Um, wasted some of the money that I did getting started early with okay, my business. Okay. But, um, but you know, every step of the way, I've learned something that I have found a way to take and apply and, and change and tweak and modify my business. So, uh, and, and I'm a big believer in that. And that's one of the reasons why I like digital marketing so well is that yeah. it gives the ability to measure and track and monitor and tweak Online, you know, everything you do online, you you can view as a mini experiment. Mm -hmm. A great example is, you know, if you run Google AdWords, and this is where you pay Google, uh, you know, to to advertise for a particular keyword phrase, you know, based on a particular geography or something. And, uh, you know, every time you do one of those, you get to test a little bit about the message of the, the, you know, the headline of the ad, the, the ad copy. The, the experience that the user has if they click through and they go to wh- wherever you're sending them onto uh, onto the website um, and, and and you you really it's it's one of the cheapest ways that you can find a, to help you find the messaging that works oh. it give you some great keyword ideas that you might want to roll in from from an organic search engine optimization strategy and and you know it, it's a pretty inexpensive inexpensive test uh, and and if you look at it that way, Sure, you're spending a little bit of money, but you're gaining a whole lot of knowledge for that. And if you mm-hmm. if you pull it back in and you apply it, it's an investment. It's not an expense. Yeah, totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Well, Ken, we've reached the end of the program. I want to thank you for coming. But before I let you go, I want you to tell us a little bit about where people can find you and interact with you or possibly contact you if they want to learn more about what you're doing or if they want to possibly do business with you. Okay. Well, um, our website is changescapeweb.com. That's C-H-A-N-G-E-S-C-A-P-E-W-E-B.com. And uh, we're also on uh, most social media platforms. Uh, our Twitter handle, Instagram, is uh, at changescape. Facebook is facebook.com forward slash changescape. And, uh, you know, so we, uh, we, we do contribute uh, and write a lot of content. 
uh, and I would encourage uh, folks to maybe check us out there. I've got a couple of books that I've written that are available on Amazon. Sure. Uh, you sure. mentioned the social media marketing for restaurants. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Earlier uh, in the year last year, I think around the March time frame, I published uh, with a couple of colleagues of mine from the Duct Tape uh, Consulting Network, uh, Reputation Management, uh, a marketing guide for small businesses. Okay. Okay. So those, those are available out there. That you can, they're Kindle versions, so they can be pretty cheap. Great, great. And I'll link to all that in the show notes. Okay. okay, my friend, it's been a pleasure talking to you and getting to know more about you, your journey, and, of course, your business experience in the past few years. Few years. I wish you many, many more successes as, you know, the year continues to unfurl and you do awesome things this year. Well, great. Well, thanks so much, and good luck in, uh, in your new city. Thanks a lot, Ken. All right, thanks. I really enjoyed it. Take care. Right, take care. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the show today. If you love what you hear on today's episode of the podcast, go to iTunes and leave a review and a comment. It helps other great listeners like yourself find the show. And, of course, you can always find more episodes of the Bulletproof Entrepreneur Podcast at www.odogwu.com.